We're ready. Okay. Um, I'm going to be presenting on anxiety in dogs and cats. So what is an anxiety disorder? It's a nervous disorder characterized by a state of excessive uneasiness and apprehension, typically with compulsive behavior or panic attacks. Um, so I actually chose this topic because Minnie has separation anxiety. Um, so she's four and a half years old, female, and we think that she's a black lab and German short-haired pointer mix, but we will And we're going to find out. It'll be very interesting. But she's a rescue from Labs of Love and Nina. She's actually my roommate, PJ's. So that's him. Okay, thanks, PJ, for bringing. <laughs> yes. Minnie. So there's different types of anxiety, and I just wanted to kind of go through the differences. Um, so the most mild form is just fear, and this is an instinctual feeling of apprehension resulting from a situation, person, or an object presenting an external threat. But this is characterized as just a normal behavior, and it's kind of part of your fight or flight response. So this can be seen in every dog. Um, and then a more, or a more worse form of fear is phobia, which is a persistent and excessive fear of a specific stimulus. Um, and so this is usually stimulated with noises, such as thunderstorms or fireworks in dogs. Um, and then we have separation anxiety, which exhibit when the dog exhibits anxiety or excessive distress behaviors when alone, dog or cat. Um, and the most common, this separation anxiety is the most common form in companion animals. And then you have your generalized anxiety, which is just anxiety from being put in certain situations or if they're around certain people or other dogs usually, or other animals. Um, and the anxiety typically develops from 12 to 36 months of age. Um, so there's many different causes, but this is kind of what separates anxiety from PTSD, which somebody gave a presentation on earlier this year. Um, so the cause is usually from social deprivation, which I have listed here. So if an animal is deprived of social situations for more than 14 weeks from birth, then they can usually develop some form of an anxiety disorder, uh, typically separation anxiety. Um, it can also be caused from illnesses, aging changes, a fearful experience, abandonment, social changes, such as moving houses a lot, or the addition of other pets, and that's especially seen in cats. Um, so then these are a bunch of different symptoms of a dog that has anxiety disorder. Um, and a lot of these we do see in many too, uh, such as the trembling, her tail tugged. She doesn't typically go to the bathroom in the house, but she has before. <laughs> um, she does bite and lick herself sometimes. Um, and changes in appetite, she'll only eat her food if you're sitting right next to her. Mm. And then um, active escape behavior. She, we keep her cage open in her room because she likes to go up there and hide sometimes. Um, so then diagnosis, you want to first rule out other diseases such as a brain or a thyroid disease and this can be done with a blood test. Um, blood tests also help out rule out other to toxic substances that could cause a neurological disorder and make the animal be acting weird. Um, you also want to recall any traumatic events to help it rule out PTSD because that typically, ha typically occurs in a dog or a cat if something really, really bad actually happened, whereas anxiety can just occur from the way that they grew up. Um, and then this can be diagnosed by a veterinarian based on the symptoms that the dog shows and what triggers their anxiety. Um, and then these are different breeds that are prone to anxiety. And I thought it was interesting that on here is listed Labrador Retrievers and Short Hair Pointers, which is what we think that he's a mix of. Yeah. So that's a bit of a genetic disposition. Um, and there's a bunch of other dog breeds. But with cats, you really only see it in Oriental breeds, such as the Siamese or the Burmese. Um, and I read that breeds with less robust temperaments tend to not get anxiety disorders. So they said cats like Maine Coon cats, which are very dominant, don't tend to show these types of um, behaviors. So then you get to the treatment. Um, if you just have a mild form of anxiety, then you can treat it by just regular play, regularly playing with your pet and keeping them active. Um, dietary supplements also help because that will keep them healthy and make them not act as anxious. And then also behavior modifications. This was a big one that I read about. Um, and you just want to turn their bad behaviors into good ones and teaching them to relax when they start to get really anxious and they are put in stressful situations. But you also really want to avoid punishing them and rather just encouraging calmness for your cat or dog. Um, but if you have a dog that has severe or worsening anxiety, then you should probably look into getting some sort of medication that can be prescribed by a veterinarian. And these are short-acting anti-anxiety medications, and these are a bunch of common ones that you can find online. Um, but I bolded fluoxetine because that's actually what Minnie takes. 
And how often does she take it? And um, weekly, nightly. nightly. Oh. oh, nightly. Mm -hmm. One one a day at nighttime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does it seem to help before yeah. and after? Yeah. Okay. We get I give it to her at night because it just like calms her down at the end of the day. Okay. But I mean, before you started that, did could you see a noticeable difference with pre medicine and post medicine? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so fluoxetine is a separation, or oh my gosh, it's specifically for separation anxiety and is FDA approved. It's a selective serotonin re reuptake inhibitor. So this increases the amount of neurotransmitter serotonin in the brain, and serotonin is a hormone that actually regulates anxiety, happiness, and mood. And then prevention. So you want to try to expose your pet to different social situations when they're in their really young stages, specifically uh, 14 weeks or younger, because that's the most um, detrimental time for them to get used to other dogs and other people. Um, you also want to stick to a set routine. So especially for dogs with their eating schedule and the time that you want them out to go to the bathroom, you want to keep that the same day by day. Um, for cats, you want to try to keep their litter box clean, because they get really picky about their litter box, and if it's not clean, then they can act up and usually go in the house. Mm -hmm. And then also providing a safe place for your pet. So like I said, with many, we keep her cage open. We never like force her in her cage, but she does like to go up there if she ever gets super stressed out, if we have a lot of people in the house or something, and she'll just hide up there. Um, but for cats, it can be like a high place or a small space, because cats like to be away from danger, so they'll go really high, or they'll be in a really small place because it makes them feel enclosed. Mm -hmm. And that's all I have. And that's your... Uh References. Okay, questions, comments from the audience? Surely somebody's been affected by, and I'll let you point, Kylie, to the people. Yeah. So my parents um, got a Doberman puppy um, a year and a half ago, um, and she was a peer. So mm -hmm. even just looking at her, she would pee. Yeah. So they, they think they've got it to the point now where it's under control, but she was definitely a nervous peer like at oh any point. Okay. That's anxiety a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. How about somebody else? I'll let you point. Yeah. Yeah, you guys know Maverick that I brought. He has some, I don't remember which type of medicine it is, okay. but I have to give him an anti-anxiety medicine when we go in the car for long trips. He's fine when he goes back and forth from like daycare to my okay. house or like to campus to my house. So it's actually but anti it, I don't remember which one. Because you know, a lot of times they give them uh, ace promazine. It, it, I remember it said like another form or like something like okay. a general form of Xanax. Because you know, ace promazine, okay. some of you know it's pretty general uh, tranquilizer a little bit, really kind of dull, dulls them down a little bit. Maybe sometime look at the bottle and tell us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my dog is really quirky. He's a Mancho Pinscher. And um, every time that we go out of town, he goes on a hunger strike when he gets back from like, because he gets boarded at the vet. And oh, so, so you leave him here? Yeah, he refuses to eat and the entire time he's there, then he refuses to eat when he gets back too. Oh, okay. And then um, he also um, barely sleeps during the night because he's so protective that he needs to be like outside all the time at nighttime. We have a fence, but he needs to be like looking for animals mm -hmm. in the yard and stuff. And we tried a whole bunch of medications and none of it has worked so far. Mm -hmm. Like we've even tried like pretty high doses for a small dog, mm -hmm. a doggy Xanax, and it's still not working okay. on him. Yeah. yeah. So I know in this class we talked about like gabapentin. Um, my roommates, um, her parents dropped off cats for like two weeks uh, just now, so, like a couple days ago. Um, and it's like an hour drive, and the veterinarian recommended gabapentin as like a, not a tranquilizer, but like a, a relaxant. I didn't actually know that was what it was used for. Does any? I don't know. I, there's so many things out there that just hard I've to keep. I've seen it used a lot in for pain. I'm for pain. For anxiety. Okay. Um, my boyfriend's family resc rescued a beagle, and they think that he was like left out hunting, and he has really bad separation anxiety, and like none of the medication works. Yeah. I've never seen a dog so anxious to be left alone. Yeah. You know. You know. Sometimes things work and sometimes don't. That's why you can never say, well, this will work for sure, right? I mean, it's dependent on the dog and everything else. Other questions, comments? I guess I have a question. How about, um, what if you had two dogs? Is it less likely that they have separation anxiety because they have a buddy there? I'm just curious, anybody? Definitely when I got Genozo, it helped Maverick in the car a little bit. Okay, so a buddy. He's still not great. I 
still have to medicate him. Okay. But it definitely helped a lot. How about like in an apartment or a house? If you have another dog, would it less likely either both of them would less likely show anxiety because they're not left alone? You know what I mean? I'm just trying to see if anybody's got that experience. I feel like it would help. Yeah. I, I my guess is it would. I some I very seldom have ever had just one dog. Yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah. When she's home alone all day long, like you can tell when we get home, she's so needy. Yeah. 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 I mean. Too bad we can't bring her, bring her to class all the time. I she's having a great time here. She, if she could talk tomorrow, she'll say, can I go to class again? I <laughs>